once again, and as we can see, Tesla has hit our 172.8% level. Now, I've put more resources into this. I'm putting more money at this level and above, um, and I'm going to target the 1800 and under number down here. Uh, this is a very easy trade. It is what I call a first blood trade. Usually when you get this type of pattern and uh, break out to the upside, um, it overextends by a good amount. So it can go up to here, the 200%. Um, it could go even higher. And I will basically look to dollar cost average into the shorts and increase you know, the, um, my trade size. Uh, the statistics on this crashing back down to here within a month or so um, is extremely high right now. Um, so I'm very confident, you know, and this would be another level down here because of the previous support. So this blue box that you see down here is what I would be targeting and whatnot. Now, again, there's two different ways you could play this. You could target this right here, uh, which I'm going to do and just go over and, um, exit half. And then from there, put a break even stop from your entry. Um, so let's say you averaged into this and it goes all the way up to here and then your average winds up being around, let's say, the 2100 area. Um, you can then uh, put a break even stop on the other half. So if you get the exaggeration downward, uh, you could profit off of there. If not, and it goes all the way back up to your entry, nothing lost. Uh, you, you clear out half the profit for, um, um, uh, you know, at the target level down here. And the other half, you, you know, basically take your chances on making additional gains or, um, uh, you know, uh, getting hit with the break-even stop. So that's an idea of a way to trade it. I know one trader that does it exactly that way every time. And percentage-wise, he, he does pretty pretty well, but he has a time, uh, uh, time error, I call it, because... Uh, it, his capital gets tied up for longer periods of time and, and time is money. Um, but I won't go into the, the esoteric nature of that and, and all the little details because it's uh, not important. He does okay. Um, so that's the idea on Tesla and uh, you know that's my big trade. I've allocated more capital towards this because I really like the setup and what I see in it. And I'm, I have high probability of this getting hit, and I don't mind averaging up even higher than this. Um, you know, I'll let it go over and burn itself out, and um, I think the profitability of 10, 15, 20 percent, whatever it decides to give me uh, in the future for this number and under, is going to be uh, it's going to work out. The statistics are there. Um, the timing, not so much. I, I'm kind of running into a, a hot one, um, but. Now that you hit the 172.8, and let's say that we hit the 200%, um, I am in what you call um, good shape. As well, there's a divergence, and I have taught you guys about this. You know, here's another one that I know a few traders that are trading this are just going for the divergence from the 172.8, and that's high probability on a shorter time scale, so they want this, the faster money. Um, oh, you know, what get? there we go and whatnot so you can see that divergence right there that is formed and divergences are kind of like gaps they, they usually get filled in time so um, that's what's occurred there uh, that's my favorite trade right now I, I have a high probability that it's going to work out within the next month or two and um, it's an easy 10, 15, 20, whatever it decides to give me uh, percent on, on the trade. And again, I gave you both variations of how you can trade it. You know, you can trade it several different ways. You can go down for here alone. That's my first blood target. Uh, usually uh, the retest of a high is high probability uh, when you get this type of breakout. And it has to do with volume and formation uh, here. So there's all kinds of statistics that you know, you don't see, but I, I know of um, that uh, validate this as being a really high probability trade. Um, other than that, uh, you know my silver, just holding, waiting, 
nothing uh, exciting here. Uh, let's go daily on this one. You know, I want that to get up to here, so nothing to do there. Um, what else is of interest uh, in the marketplace right now? Um, uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. I do believe this one right here uh, will likely go back to under 30, but I don't want to play. That's a gambling stock in my opinion. I mean, that has no real value or anything to it. Um, you know my AMD. Uh, I, I think it's going to continue to go higher from here. Nothing to really look at. Just It's more of a buy and hold at this point and so forth. With exiting half, you know, and from the move that we had, I mean, it's been fantastic for me. I don't have to tell you. Um, and I believe it has a real bright future. I think it's going to really now be, you know, in real even competition with Intel, uh, if not even surpassing them. Uh, but Intel has a really big cash buildup and balance sheet, so we'll see. It could be an ugly war, but that is good for all of us because that means processors are going to advance. Uh, Intel basically wanted to go over and, and not improve their processors at all and just take in the money for the past year, so they gave themselves the competitive disadvantage that was going to hit them at some point, and that's exactly what happened. So uh, they got greedy, and uh, they didn't advance their technology, and there's where we are today. And now they're going to have to play catch up against AMD, who's going to uh, really um, push them uh, to advance. So that's good for us as far as processors and technology goes. So we'll see. Uh, other than that, we'll go back to Bitcoin. And you can see where we are at Bitcoin. Nothing to do here. I hope it goes higher. I hope it actually breaks this and goes up some more because I know that the pain when it does drop back down it's going to be ugly for people and they're going to be wondering why did it go down oh my god or it could fail somewhere within this area and start our next move downward which would be under that 10,000 and all the way down 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 and ultimately we want to see it get back to here the under 8k range and probably flatten out for a while and just become very boring and then some really interesting things will happen, um, but I'm not going to tell you when. I'll update you. Uh, first, we need this to actually occur. Uh, I can't dream about it. It actually has to happen statistically. And then I can give you the, the bigger picture because uh, it's unknown variable right now. So we're dealing with X, and we're going to wait to see what it does and let the chaos uh, play itself out. Um, the one that I do like, if I was looking, is this one right here. And uh, this is one that I've started buying when it went under here, the 550. And it's really risky. And I mean, it's so small, it doesn't even, you know, it's not, it's not consequential to me. But I like it as a chart play and as a momentum play. And... Um, so I, I am going to buy that, you know, I've started buying it, and, but it's very small. And anything under this 550 is, in my opinion, a good buy. So um, my next buy order is down at 5, if it gets there. And again, uh, this is gambling, kind of, you know, bit dangerous because it's an altcoin and it's one of the DeFi ones, but this one has such buzz and all I hear people talking about it. And if they actually create the product off of this, um, I, I really like what, uh, um, you know, I like its possibilities for going all the way up to that 15 and who knows, you can't never tell with these. But all right, so I've got, you know, I got 550 in one. I got one at five, and I have another one at 448. And I'll even buy it down to four, or right here. So I'm going to put buy orders in for all of those levels, and hopefully they get filled. But again, it's non-consequential. I don't really have any real um, skin behind it. I guess you can say. So to me, it's not 
anything of importance. But uh, I, I like it, and I, I like what it, it does. Uh, what it does is basically it uh, allows synthetic assets to be traded. Basically, you're trading uh, your commodities and your um, uh, stocks and, and whatever else you want to trade as a different asset class uh, through blockchain. Uh, and uh, I'll have more on it. I'll post it in the in the room so you guys can see. I think I've already started, right? Um, and uh, you know, take a look at it because I, I think if changes implement this, um, it's going to be very interesting. And it's going to be also probably something that's going to catch the eyes of regulators uh, because they don't the, the people that own the exchanges and uh, the markets you know, like NASDAQ and so on and so forth are going to be up in arms when they figure out what exactly this does and how it works because it's going to eat into their um, their capital base. And uh, when you, uh, let's say that you have $1,000, you're an investor and you have $1,000, even if it's these millennials, and uh, you want to buy Apple or something, you know, you go to the exchange and they make money off of that right for and so forth and they offer you security they offer you um uh you know uh, protections basically and uh a place to trade and you know they they make their business off of there so what happens if you move it to blockchain and so forth um who's getting paid exactly and uh so that's the the issue so you're probably going to hear some, uh, there's going to be a wall hit at some point on this. So it makes it a little bit dangerous. But right now we are in the DeFi hype and uh, it, it's fun to play. So that's what I'm basically doing. Don't think it's any real big trade for me. It's nothing. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a risky gamble. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. But uh, I hear people talking about, you know, Fifteen dollars, and you know, use things like this can go bizarre numbers. It can go up to the thirties, the twenty. Who knows? You never know with it. And it's got so much hype and so forth, as uh, the whole DeFi space does. So uh, we'll see. Um, but uh, at least there's some excitement in the crypto world, right? Since we're waiting for the next real bull market to hit, which, in my opinion, is a, a bit of time off. Uh, you know, we have a little, we have some time. Um, other than that, you know, I told you about silver, um, what I'm looking for, target there. Outside of Bitcoin, my favorite holding, uh, my second largest. And um, what else? Oh, the IQ. You know, uh, we dropped down to the under the 20 amount and so forth on here, and I'm going to be watching this one. Uh, I do like it because it's one of these China hustle stocks, these... Uh, companies in China that have no oversight because they're in China, they're in communist China, um, which is a joke and so forth. They're playing games, and that's why they're going to likely get kicked off of the you know exchanges in the U.S. is because they're very corrupt. I mean, uh, this this you know this communist country has to go over and stop with all the the uh, three things it's doing. You know, it's basically. Uh, cheating, lying, and stealing, and uh, you know, technology transfers, forced technology transfers. That's not going to play out in the future. Um, the um, lying about your your balance sheets and uh, making your companies five to ten times uh, larger than they actually really are, um, uh, and the, the cheating, trying to break all the rules and so forth. Uh, it, it's got to stop. Um, you know, if not, they're going to have more trade, you know, more Western countries are going to avoid dealing with them and they're going to have more problems, but we'll see. Um, again, I like the wolf warrior and I'll go more onto that and, um, uh, what they're doing and so forth is pretty, pretty smart, um, and whatnot. And, uh, yep. So other than that, I hope you guys have a great week and we'll see what happens, but, uh, you know, we got Tesla. We got Tesla in our sights now. I hit my second level, so I got my next entry up here. Hopefully, it'll hit my third level up here. Uh, oh, there we go. So there you see a, a pullback already. This is a natural 
Interesting. <sighs> All right. Let me expand on it a little bit here. See how it pulled back as soon as it went above there, and it's like a that's kind of an ugly candle pattern right there. But anyway, we'll see how it plays out. It hit that 172.8 and above. And uh, usually, statistically, this has, uh, if you see a strong move down after it hits there, um, it, that's normal, uh, plus the divergence that we have here. And uh, we're looking for that target all the way down there. So you know what I'm thinking. You know what uh, my play is on this. And uh, I don't have to tell you. So we'll see how it works out. And I will talk to you guys later. Alrighty, bye.